Right. Hey, David. All right. Earth is flat. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> We're not moving. Look yeah. outside. Go outside. Meditate. We're not spinning. We're not moving. Um, here's a little video I just uploaded. This is called a hypersonic sled. All right. Do you guys have me? So I, I become speaker view. If you put it on speaker view yeah, or, yeah. Or, or pin me, I don't know. I don't know how you want to do it. Um, it might be easier. This sled is going Mach 8.6. And if you can hear the noise, it's a, you can't hear the noise, but the noise is insane. Ready? That's it. It just went by. It'll show it again. Just watch carefully. Uh, the light will flash. One, two. And here it comes. Ready? Boom. It's gone. Is that pretty fast, right? Yeah. You can't even fathom what that speed is. Well, in the what I call the helio nonsensical model, which we're all taught that we live in, the earth is hold on a second we maybe we need to do something because every time elena or anybody get, like kind of nods so or if you if you double click on my on my um screen it, it'll i think yeah. you can pin it yeah we pinned you yeah you just pin me hold on now i now i just screwed myself up um <laughs> escape. also what you do is Mute yourself while while David's talking. Only unmute when you ask a question. Yeah, that'll work. That'll um, stop it from popping. So, I just uh, I just made my screen. There we go. Um. So just you, you just here's the the way they fool us is they teach us not to think right. So in in the heliocentric model, the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour, and. Uh, you know, the, what they'll teach you, well, that's only around once per day. And the hour hand on a clock goes around twice per day. And you still can't see that moving. But that's because we're talking something this big. Imagine a merry-go-round at North Mayanas. You're on the merry-go-round and only one around once a day. You'd barely feel it moving if you'd feel it at all, right? Now expand that merry-go-round to a thousand miles wide. Okay. Well, now you couldn't even run to keep up with it. All right. Because you'd have to run a thousand miles in 24 hours just to, to keep up with it. Now expand it to the size of the earth. You're going a thousand miles an hour on a curved trajectory. That's insane. So we're spinning. That's the slowest motion of them all. We're orbiting the sun at 10 times the speed of this hypersonic sled. 10 times the speed is our orbitables or, or orbitable. Am I saying it right? Orbitable? Watch. 10 times the speed is how fast we're going around the sun. Ready? One, two, three. Here it comes. Ready? Boom. And it's gone. Okay. And then we're chasing the sun at like, I think it's 80 times faster than that. Okay. These are, these are, this is insanity. Okay. And they tell us, well, <clears throat> it's all relative. You're going that speed. So you don't feel it. Well, these are all curving trajectories. Curve, curving is acceleration. Hold up dinner plate filled with water and a car going on a straight road. Maybe you can hold it. And then the car starts turning. Forget it. All the water is going left. It's going right. This is slower. This is one tenth the speed of the orbit of the Earth. Isn't that insane? Okay. Insane. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Like, and, and especially the, I see some kids in here. I love seeing kids in here. What makes you think the earth is a globe? Like what question do you have? Yeah. I'm talking to you. <laughs> you have to unmute yourself, Ashley. There we go. So, so why do you think the earth is a globe? Do you think the earth is a globe? Yes. No, you oh. don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you tell me oh, what you okay. think. You tell he, she just woke up like three minutes ago, so we're we're still in La La Land. All right, that's all right. Um, so like, this, I can go on. There's a million things I can go on, but it helps if you guys ask me a question. Like, Maria, what question do you have? Like, what what thing <clears throat> keeps you from screaming at everybody? The Earth is flat. Wake the heck up. <laughs> Oh. Wait, what I do scream it at that? yeah, she does scream it at people, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's yeah, strategic credibility issues. Oh yeah, know, that's but, a good point. Um, because I'm already the anti-vaxxer, so 
Well, that makes you smart in my book, so. Yes, I see <laughs> that. I think everyone um, on the call agrees, but, um, you know. Yeah. No, yeah, I've li that's what someone has literally said to me. Like, don't tell people that you lose all credibility when you start talking about the flat earth. But I'm like, you have to look into it. Because even with my husband, we watched that documentary level and he's like, I have no counter. He even, he was like, well, what are the globe? He's like, where are the globe proofs? I'm like, there aren't any. There's like, none, no there's, there's not one. And so, and, yeah. What I, what I tell people is things fall into three baskets. Works on a flat earth. Lots of things work on a flat earth. We can see too far, that works on a flat earth. Um, we can circumnavigate east and west, that works on a flat earth. It also works on a globe. So east and west circumnavigation go into the basket, works on both. The third basket is only works on a globe and there's nothing. There's nothing that ever goes into that basket. Like southern circumnavigation does not work on flat earth. It does work on a globe, but it's never been done. Not once. At least, yeah. You guys understand how circumnavigation works? And this is a demonstration you can show people. Just put a magnet down, put a compass down, say, all right, this is your boat, push it east. And, uh, and right now it's going east or west, it's going west, it's going west, yeah. Um, west is a circle because that compass always has to point towards the center. If I put you on a racetrack, a circular racetrack that was a thousand miles around, and I said, all right, drive it as, you know, hundred, hundreds of miles an hour, as fast as your car can go, you would think you're full, you're going in a straight line. It's the only thing that would tell you you're not going in a straight line is the surroundings around you, but the road would look perfectly straight to you because you can't see that far, you know, perfectly flat, perfectly circular, but you'd, you'd be going in a circle and you wouldn't know it. So that's the same for east-west circumnavigation, especially because you're looking at a compass and just micro adjusting, making sure that you're heading east or heading west. Um, when you head south, which would be on a globe, you'd pop up over here, it's never been done. Okay, why hasn't it ever been done? The answer is simple because the earth is flat. <laughs> Billions of people have gone east-west. Zero people have gone south-north, north-south. So is there any way now that there's, so what kind of steps are we taking to kind of actually get to that s southern area and explore it more? I mean, I know that they have, I know that you have to have a permit and you can't really, but are, there, are you guys, are there steps like a community that are taking steps to kind of do that experiment <clears throat> you fly around, you know, the, yeah the border of Antarctica and kind of show that it's not what we've been told? Right, well, they won't let us. No one's allowed to go because of the Antarctic Treaty. Uh, no one's allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south, which is this pink line. And you can't even see Antarctica from that line, this, you know, from 60 degrees south. It's still thousands of miles away or um, at least a thousand miles away. Well, they like shoot you, like if you actually got a plane and flew it, past that line, what happens? And are, are there guards all over? Yeah, there's military aircraft, military ships. But the problem with an airplane is you can't fly out there. You can't navigate out there because compasses don't work and GPS doesn't work, okay? They have their private GPS uh, system out there, which is all done with high flying aircraft and balloons, I'm thinking. But it's hard to navigate out there. And if you got out there, if they let you go, where are you going? How are you getting back? Where are you getting fuel? How are you navigating? Okay, it won't work. Um, one guy, uh, Shenton, or I forget his name, he got permission from his country to go explore Antarctica. He got a ship, you know, millions of dollars. And uh, before he even got to the shoreline of Antarctica, he was intercepted by two uh, um, UN, you know, United States uh, destroyers and threatened to be sunk, turned around, sent home. And when he got home, he was put in jail, even David, though he got permission. David, when was the treaty done? 1959. So who, who wasn't, who? designed it who started it the united nations so <clears throat> the history of, of of what's going on the, the we're in a, a a reset in the late 1800s early 1900s this world was reset and leaders were put into place okay and they didn't even know the truth of the world because there's pe people or people that are controlling us beyond that are above them all the people that we call our leaders they're just actors they're just literally actors 
And um, in the 1940s, they started discovering, uh, were able to go, had the technology to go out and explore Antarctica. And they discovered the, 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 um, the ice wall, you know, Antarctica, the shoreline of Antarctica. Then they went and they discovered the firmament, uh, the operation, um, what's it called? Let me see it, the um, deep freeze. So then they quickly developed NASA, right, to hide the whole thing. Then uh, Admiral Byrd uh, said he went on uh, NBC News or the early news program, and he said uh, he discovered land bigger than the United States, filled with resources that no human has ever set eyes upon. And then all of a sudden he disappears, he dies, and the Antarctic Treaty goes into effect. Okay? Right? Meanwhile, all the countries in the world are fighting for resources, wars all over the place, and uh, that we have to protect the penguins and the ice. Everybody signs on. A dozen countries signed on immediately, and then the rest of the countries all signed on. 1959. No corporation, no country, nobody can even petition this until the year 2041. Well, they'll just kick it down the road another 60 years. Then after that, they started sending bombs up and trying to blow a hole in what in into space. You know, the, and the and the videos, which are really hard to find now, um, the bombs going off, you could see that it's hitting something and spreading out. Okay, so they were trying to blow a hole in the firmament. You listen to Hillary Clinton, any speech she does, she talks about blowing a hole in the glass ceiling above us. I mean, there's so much predictive programming about that, and literally they're trying to break creation. And then, uh, then they did the moon missions to solidify that yes, you can walk upside down on a ball in a vacuum, and now that has brainwashed the entire world. Yeah, and so China's on this treaty too, right? So when they, I mean, really, whoever's controlling this is controlling all of these governments. So when they're yeah. saying, when we're now like going into like a nuclear war with China, that's where nuclear bombs are now even in question. Like it's all just to scare us because it's not China. We're, we shouldn't be mad at China. It's whoever's controlling this. How do we find out who these people are? Well, like, these how people. Do we yeah, they, they, we don't even know. We don't see who these people. You know, these are the royal families, the banking families. Those are the underlings. But when you say, first thing, nuclear bombs aren't in question. Nuclear bombs are ridiculous. They don't <laughs> exist. Okay, they're, 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 there's it's so provable that they're fake. Um, it's just about fear. And countries are by division. In the 1800s, there was a worldwide civilization called Tataria here. And the whole world was united. And then something happened. Some cataclysm happened. It divided us all up. And then they created all of these countries. They divided us by countries, by religions, by races, by political parties, anti-vax, vaxxed, you know, um, genders. They're dividing, 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 because they know that if we come together, we, may, we can overtake them easily. We can overtake them this afternoon. If everybody just said, I'm ignoring you now, because the only, only control they have over us is in our imagination. There's no, there's no one's allowed to rule over you. And when you talk about China, this is China landing on Mars the other day. This is the actual footage that they show landing on Mars. They said they landed on Mars the other day? China yep. did? I yeah. Hear about that. And you can tell it's real though, because they clap and they hug. And, <laughs> and to me, you can't fake that. What's that, Maria? Wait, hold on. Say what? Is there a ship that had the video camera on it? Say that one more time. Is it, was there a second? spaceship that had the video camera on it the, the one that's on the ground that's filming yeah. they never address that they won't address it but this is what they show this is the only the only evidence this is the only evidence that they landed on mars this is it okay and it's not much better than the united states because we landed a rover on mars um again not that long ago um a couple months before that and this is the only evidence that we did. They wheeled televisions and screens into kids' classrooms to watch this. This is what they showed us. This is a cartoon, okay? This is brainwashing 101. None of this is real. You know, Cartman and Kyle and, uh, and uh, the rest of the crew on South Park are laughing at this. This is the dumbest thing ever. It's almost as dumb as the spinning ball flying in a space vacuum. Think about this. While you're watching, this is the actual, this is the only proof that we landed on Mars. Once upon a time, there was nothing and it exploded and became everything. This is the story of heliocentrism. And then all of the rocky bits started sticking together because they had a little attraction and they got bigger and bigger and they sucked in more rocks and they turned into perfect spinning balls. 
And then all of the gases decided to stick to each other and create these giant gas balls way bigger than planet Rocky balls. And they, they burst into flames and they burn for billions and billions and billions of years. And they leave a vacuum, a vacuum in between. So now we have burning balls of gas in a space vacuum. That's a problem. Holding on to rocky balls in great distances where they maintain perfect orbits and none of their gravities ever interfere with each other. And that way we can predict where they're gonna be forever and ever and ever. Okay, that's insanity. You know, you can take the world's best supercomputer and uh, it's called, this is called the three body problem. You can say, okay, I've got a sun, it's this big, it's got this much gravity, I've got a planet, and I put it into orbit and the, the computer will model it perfectly. You can say, where will it be on next Tuesday at 2 p.m.? And it'll show you. Where will it be in 10,000 years? It will show you, it'll show you perfectly. Then you add one more body, a moon or another planet and the entire model falls apart. It goes into chaos mode and it never repeats. Meanwhile, we know every alignment that's going to happen. We know every eclipse that's going to happen. And the eclipses, did you know this? Repeat every 18 years. Did you know that? The, the eclipse cycle repeats. Now, the idea that a, a distant sun is 400 times bigger than a moon and 400 times farther, that way they, they line up perfectly, right? They line up perfectly to make an eclipse. The chances of that happening with the distances and sizes that they tell us are 0.000, 100 more zeros to one, okay? That's for it happening once, but it happens every year. And then the whole cycle repeats again every 18 years. That shows you that the wheels in the sky are a perfect clock. They're not a random beehive of complete and total nonsense like they're telling us. They've, they've, they've really done a number, especially on kids, making them believe all of this because if somebody that you respect, your teacher, a scientist, some guy in a bow tie tells you something, you're like, well, he's got more education than me. He's got a degree. He's got a degree in indoctrination. Um, most of them, most of the teachers that are teaching this, they believe it. So they're not lying. They believe it because they were the best at memorizing and regurgitating the complete and total nonsense, right? The sky is a perfect clock and it, re it, it shows you where everything is going to be. The sun and the moon are on their own wheel and they spin in between the inner line and the outer line, which is the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. And only when they meet at a nodal point is there what we call an eclipse, but an eclipse is nothing like what they tell us. The sun takes six months to migrate from that outer line to the inner line, and the moon does it every two weeks. Questions? So what about the planets then? Can you go over that? I'm new to this. Yeah, no problem. So uh, let's start with uh, the number one planet of all, which would be Earth. Um, you know, we have spacecraft going into space doing crazy things, and uh, there's no pictures of Earth. These are two images that NASA gives us, and it's hard to see United States here, but it's tiny next to the United States here. Um, NASA even admits that every image they give us of Earth is made in Photoshop or just painted. They admit it. They, they say they have no images of Earth. Here's the blue marble, um, which was on everyone's iPhone. And then a few years later, they came out with this. Look at the United States. Look at the size difference, right? And then the guy that made the blue marble admitted he made it in Photoshop and he was lazy. He stepped and repeated the clouds again and again and again, okay? The only people that claim there's photos of Earth are people that are defending the ball. NASA even admits there are no photos of Earth. No photos of Earth. Crazy. But NASA is able to get <clears throat> photos of Jupiter. This is the one that everyone saw. It came out in 2014, every magazine. Amazing. And then in 2016, they go, oh, we got a shot of the Northern Lights. That proves that Jupiter has a magnetic core, just like Earth. 
right? David, wow. David, what? David, does NASA, did NASA say, say this once? Was it a mistake when they said it, that there's no pictures of Earth? Or do they say it all the time, just we're not hearing it? They don't, they don't say there's no pictures of Earth. They, when you, when you specify every picture, they say, well, this one was done this way. This one was made from strips of data. Robert Simmons, a, VASA, a NASA visual artist said he, uh, he um, made the blue marble and he made it from data, not even photos. And he just said, I hit command X a lot, you know, which is delete. And he, he made it look like what people thought they would look. In 1927, Uni um, Universal Pictures had this spinning globe at the beginning of their movies. And then how did they know what it looked like? No one's been to space. And then NASA goes up in 1950s or, or you know, whatever, or 1960s. And it looks just like what Universal put out there. How the heck did that happen, right? Mm -hmm. And so just getting back to this, these are clouds that are, that are going in different directions. They didn't change at all. It's just This is just darker. See this little cloud? It's right there, right? This, this little thing here, it's right there. It's the exact same picture. They just darkened it a little bit, threw this on top, and said, now we know how it has a magnetic core. That's just, it's just, they're just lying. And they're lying horribly, just totally horribly. Um, then, uh, you know, we have a, uh, a spaceship supposedly whizzing, you know, I think it was Voyager or Cassini that's whizzing through our outer solar system. And it grabbed a photo of Pluto, right? This is NASA's official photo of Pluto. I'm looking for it. Um, here it is. And there seems to be like a desert that kind of looks like the dog Pluto. Is that my imagination? How did this thing, now remember, Pluto is so far out in the solar system that we can't even see it. So the sun would be like the size of a friggin' star. You know, it would be tiny. How did they flying by at 60,000 miles an hour get this perfect full image of Pluto? right? Insanity. So, so they're mocking us at the same time. Go ahead. David, are they claiming that's a photo or are they also saying it's a CGI? No, that they claim that's a, they, well, they claim, they, they don't, they don't say it's CGI. They never use the word photograph. They use the word image and picture because they don't want to lie. So a picture is a picture, right? A photograph is a lie if it's not an actual photograph. So go look on NASA's website. They never use the word photograph. Um, so, so what, you know, what the heck is going on out there? You know, all of these other stars, you know, they're like, well, we saw it dim for a little bit. Therefore, we know the size of a planet and, and the, the gases that are on it. And they're, they're just coming up with all of this nonsense left and right. And then they show us these these. I'm trying to watch my language because sometimes I get excited. Um, they show us all these horrible little pictures. And, uh, and so I did this one day. I said, did, did, I put this up. I said, did you guys see all these new images um, from NASA of these new discovered planets? Now, these actually look better than what NASA shows us. But you know what these are? These are the bottoms of frying pans. What? These are frying pans. Where did this come from? You made it. I made it. Oh. They're images of the bottoms of frying pans. And I did it, and I didn't even have Photoshop. I did it in like, in like a, a, a little horrible little program. Um, and I didn't even know what I was doing, right? NASA shows us this, but our consumer optics have outgrown their lies. This is what you see when you look up at planets, okay? It's nothing like what NASA shows us. And um, let me see if I can find it. The, the image of Saturn that everybody knows, you know, there's only really one image of Saturn, if I could find it. Um, and it's, it, they didn't expect that we would have Photoshop and be able to go take their images off their website and show them all, oh, here, here's another one. Here's Earth, 1978. And in 2017, they told us how bad global warming is, all the pollution. Look at all the pollution. This is horrible, right? What do you guys see wrong with this picture? Uh, they look exactly the same. Yeah, look at the clouds. They're the same. They didn't even change the clouds, right? But you can show this to people and they're like, oh, well, you know, and they just short circuit and they don't process the information because it's too painful um, to realize that their entire life is a lie. How about this? 
this is uh, the when I showed you the two pictures, this is the one with the bigger United States. So some people say, well, well, you're, they're closer and you're not really seeing the edges because you're just seeing a horizon. And I'm like, OK, well, let's look at this. This we can measure. We can drive across Mexico and Baja and say that's 934 miles. NASA tells us the diameter, a straight line through the Earth edge to edge, is 7,917 miles. So I should fit eight and a half of these between these two red lines. Eight and a half doesn't even fit on this page. David, I have a question for you. Tell me if it's an inappropriate time to be asking this question and it's okay. The bottom line, why do they need to be lying about this to us? Let's hold that. For thank you. thank closer you. to the end. Okay. Can I ask you a question, David? You just uh, did. Sorry, next. No, uh, no, that's cool. A friend of mine sent me this. Remember when there was this conjunction? Yeah. Okay. So that's not a that that's a painting. She said that her cousin took the picture with an um with their own personal telescope. Um I, I let me say the same thing though. I don't know if it was in that same Oh, thing. okay, that's why. Hold on, I'm trying to I'm trying to find my Saturn picture. Um, I'd have to see the picture. You know, Saturn does have rings and they're lit up just like the sun, but they're not like the images that NASA shows us. Um, I just had it a second ago and now it is I wonder if that picture, because I think the telescopes sometimes show you things and then the telescopes will also do like they'll have a program to make it look a certain way. Oh yeah. There are pro there are yeah, I don't know what telescope, but there are telescopes that will enhance images yeah. and uh, and they create stuff like that so i'm not saying that's what that is i'd have to see it but i have seen that and uh it's crazy they'll just you know it knows where you're pointing and what you're seeing and then it puts an image in there that's not real well because yeah like when yeah. i was with someone i was looking through the telescope and you saw one thing and then they were looking on the screen and it was something um different but like saturn what you showed through the telescope was lights i guess we have to go get our own telescope no you need to get a, a nikon p900 or p1000 camera the p900 is the one before uh the p1000 came out and it's much smaller and it's actually a really great camera easy to carry around the p1000 is a monster mm -hmm. um but um at some point, though, you really have to trust the electronics, too, because like, or you have to understand the electronics at some level, because when you're looking at something that's going into the sky and it's, do, it's doing some processing so we can see it, it's like, what's the processing that's being done that we see on the screen? Right. So, so on a, on a, on a super zoom camera, it's just a lens. There's no electronics. There's nothing going on. You're zooming in and you can see the stuff. And that's what I got. And that's what, that's how I figured, you know, I went and tested this stuff myself, but this is just, this is just the edge of the picture. Everyone knows the famous picture of Venus. We took it off NASA's website. We put it in Photoshop and we cranked up the levels, overexposed it. And look, this is showing that they literally cut and pasted together like a, a girl doing a collage with, with, you know, glue and, and pictures. This is cut and pasted together. This isn't a real image. Now, go look at Venus through a good, good, good zoom lens. I mean, Venus, Saturn, and you can see it's a, it looks like a sphere. It might not be. Um, it's lit, it's lit up like a light bulb. And then the rings are lit up equally. Um, what is, what is it? I don't know. You know, people say it's a God of, uh, no, Mars is the God of war. It's, um, I don't know. There's a lot of worship over, you know, all of our, our planets, which used to be called wandering stars, are, are named after gods. So you tell me what's going on up there. I don't know. Um, and here is uh, some imagery of, of um, Mars that I took. When you zoom in on Mars, this is what you see, not what NASA shows us, right? It's, it's got like geometric patterns, sacred geometry in it. Uh, it's a little out of focus, but when you when you zoom in and see what's really up there, it it's mind blowing, right? And here is the star Arcturus. Okay, anyone can zoom in on this and see it. You can actually see it twinkling, and they say, "Oh, it's twinkling because it's coming through the atmosphere." Maybe some of that's true, but this isn't a burning ball of hydrogen trillions of miles away. Let Let's talk about the distance of stars for a second. Okay, this is Arcturus, right? Give me one, one second, one second. Um, it's gotta be That's one. the regular speed. This is regular speed. Uh, and then I, I, I think on uh, this one, I slow it down a little bit. Um, 
you took these just with a lens that camera is just a lens it's there's just no a camera you can zoom in and see it live it's amazing yeah. when you do it um hold on when can we come to your house and you can show us this stuff well, I'm showing it to you now. It's easier for me to show you here I mean, than. I really want to see it. Yeah. Live. She doesn't want to. We can't. Oh, trust it, so it. on a clear night, you know, just <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 lend you my camera. You can go look at it yourself. Um, okay. Um. All right. So back to where we were. The so. Here's a whole bunch of stars, right? Now, some people you will say, well, some are out of focus. Yeah, some are out of focus. It's hard to focus on something that's not even there. These are just imagery, in, uh, just luminaries in the sky. And if you look up star in a jar, um, where they take, they, they focus sound waves into water, into a jar of water, and these little suns appear in the, su in the water, okay? So this is all resonance and ener energy, you know, in this, I, I, I believe we live in a, uh, the word I use now is a physical simulation. That's where I think we live. And we're here experiencing um, the world as, as through, through the, you know, we're being eyes for the creator. We'll get into that in a little bit. All right, so I, I was looking for something else. We were talking about, um, I'm gonna show you something else. What was your question? Someone had a question? Megan Anybody? had asked about planets. I don't know. Oh, oh, wait, wait. We so, that. um, oh yeah. So I was showing you planets, and uh, oh, I just spaced out. Um, Saturn. Oh yeah, and then Maria had asked you about Saturn. Right, and, and I showed you the picture of Saturn. That's what the stars actually look like. They I used to about be called the size of the stars. Say again. And the distance of the stars. He started to tell us oh, about no, the, the distance, distance of the stars. Correct, 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 correct. So they tell us that that, that that was it. So people short circuit on this. This is simple math. Just relax. Every single one of you, including the kids, can understand this. Okay. They tell us that the sun is gigantic. Okay. That, you know, if the sun was a yoga ball, one of those big yoga balls, the earth is a, a small marble next to it, right? Little tiny marble. You with me? Everybody? Yeah. Feedback? Right? Here's the sun, here's the earth. That's, that's the comparison in size. So let's say I move the sun to um, just a mile above your head. It would look like this. It would fill the entire sky, right? And then we move the sun away, 93 million miles away. What happens to the sun? What happens to the sun? It gets smaller, why? Simple, yeah. due to perspective. It, it gets smaller due to perspective. So. Remember this, the sun is just a mile overhead. We're out in the middle of the ocean on a small little island, 360 degree view. All we'll see is the sun. It fills the entire sky as far as we can see. Moving 93 million miles away, it becomes the size of a coin held at arm's length, just like we see the sun every day. So think about how much that reduced. The entire sky, horizon to horizon, to the size of a nickel or a dime or a quarter at arm's length. If I doubled that distance, could you see it? No. Well, to be safe, let's make it 24 times farther. If I made it 24 times farther, that's two light hours. No, that's, that's, that's three light hours. Light hours is the distance light travels in a day, right? Uh, in an hour. So the sun is eight light minutes away times 24, three light hours. It's three light hours away. There's absolutely no possible way that we can see it. It's too small, it's too far. Your eye can't resolve it. And the brightness issues with the inverse square law of light is a whole nother, <clears throat> whole nother thing, but we won't even use that to keep it simple. Can't see it. Now Polaris, our North star is 48 times bigger, 48 times bigger. So. If I had three light hours times 48, that's six light days. That, that will make Polaris the, the equivalent size. So it's six light days away. It would be impossible to see Polaris. Its angular size is too small, period. 
scientifically provable. You go over what I just said again. It's too small to see by magnitudes at six light days away. And they tell us Polaris is 433 light years away. Okay. It's impossible to see it at six light hours. So all of these mumbo jumbo distances are, are complete and total nonsense. If you think about it, um, you know, we're, we're corkscrewing through the infinite solar system galaxy and we're traveling four and a half billion, billion with a B, miles a year. So next year, same day, same time, we're four and a half billion miles from where we went and there's no parallax in the stars. We don't see any distance, any, any of the stars change. I mean, it would be like, you know, a beehive, bees going crazy and then come back 20 minutes later and every bee is in the exact same position, okay? That's, that's nonsense. Complete and total nonsense. So one of the things, one way, you know, just think about that. We're doing all of these motions. We're, we're cruising all over the place. And uh, are you guys familiar? You guys are all familiar with the Georgia Guidestones, right? Yeah. So in the Georgia Guidestones, there's a little hole, if I can find my picture. And if you look through the hole, here it is. If you look through this hole right here, you will see Polaris. It never moves, Okay. It never moves. You do a time lapse and the stars will spin around and Polaris never, never moves. It's been up for over 40 years. We've traveled four and a half billion miles in one of the directions that we're traveling, right? Um, but Polaris never moved from that hole. Does that make any sense to anybody? What's the explanation for the, all the pictures of the planets? They don't have stars in the pictures. Because they can't, you know, from, from outer space you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I think they should have an explanation for that, right? But they, yeah, they the, have because it would be too easy to prove the pictures were fake if they tried to put the stars in, right? Yeah, their explanation oh. is um, it's it's um, the shutter, the um, aperture. You know, you're looking at a bright planet. It's going to block out all the stars. Well, guess what? A friend of mine, a flat earther in Thailand, he went out on a starry night. Everything all right? Yeah, well, the kids were outside. Maria's daughter just came in, so she's tending to her for a minute. <clears throat> so, so to answer your question, so my friend, with, a, with just an iPhone, he sat underneath a streetlight, a bright streetlight, and he could see the stars beyond the streetlight. Just to show you, the aperture explanation is nonsense. Another thing is <clears throat> we sent up a balloon that went up. Um, we sent it up at nighttime. We had to do it twice because something very funny happened to the first one or very strange. Um, and uh, it was a starry night. and We had the cameras pointing up on this balloon, high definition, 4K cameras pointing up. And when we got to 100, we got, no, we got to, you think as it goes higher, the stars are going to get brighter and there's going to be more and more stars. Just like if you go to the top of a mountain, the stars are clearer and brighter, right? You'd think that's going to keep happening. Nope. 50, 60, 70,000 feet, 80,000 feet, all the stars were gone. Yeah. Right. Right. I think that all of the luminaries that we see in the sky are not physical they are here they're being projected you know the we we had the moon for the last few days in the in the day sky but now tonight go look at the moon tonight did you guys see the moon last night it was crazy right crazy moon crazy clear but look at it ask yourself where where is that moon all right is it 238,000 miles away or is it right here within the earth system like when you look up and if there's some clouds in the sky you'll look this, it lights up just the clouds that are near it and all of the other clouds are in the darkness. If it was 238,000 miles away, it would light up all the clouds, right? Throw a bunch of cotton balls down on the table, say those are clouds, get a light and see how close you have to bring that light to light up just a few of them. I believe that the moon that we see is just above the clouds. But if you went up to the clouds, it would move up higher. As you go up higher, the relative position of it moves, right? It's more, I think it's more of a projection um, or a reflection than anything physical. Didn't, wasn't there a video of someone saying it was plasma? Oh yeah, the, so there was a, a scientist uh, in the 19, early 60s and he was like 
totally squashing everything NASA was doing. And he's like, the moon's a plasma, you know, it's not physical. And the, and the reporter's like, well, they're, they're going to go to the moon and they're going to walk on it. He's like, nope, they're not. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. Then he disappeared and uh, he was silenced. Um, this whole takeover, this whole deception happened in uh, the early 1900s, not before, right? Everybody on Earth knew the Earth was flat. You guys have all seen my Ruth interview, right? Ruth, 102-year-old woman, said that in Hamden Public Schools, she was taught that the Earth was flat in the 1920s. So go back to the stars for a second. So as you go higher, you don't see them. Yep. You know, I remember long before I was a flat earther, I was flying from uh, California to Hawaii at night. And I was really excited that I'm going to be out over the ocean. I'm going to be up high and I'm going to look out the window. I wanted to see the stars. And when I looked out the window, I saw like three little three or four stars. And I'm like, what is it? And I just kind of wrote it off to, um, I kind of wrote it off to the the ceiling. I mean, the the lights in the airplane, and I'm trying to like put blankets over my head and darken everything out, and I can only see a couple stars, and they didn't look like they were that much higher than me too, which is crazy. I'm only at thirty five, forty thousand feet, so that's crazy. But as the plane, as the as our balloon went up in Arizona, all the stars just disappeared. So. I think that we're seeing these things relative to our own position. And we, we've done a bunch of experiments that show how that could happen. Um, but that, that was one of the, that thing actually blew me away uh, when, when that happened. And we really don't have a full explanation of it, but it destroys the heliocentric model because the higher you go, the farther you get away from the earth lights and the atmosphere, uh, the more, um, you know, the brighter the stars should be. Here's a balloon. We get up to whenever we get up to 120,000 feet. Does that look like it's much higher? Does that look like it's 93 million miles away? Or does this sun look like it's right here and kind of lighting up a hot spot on the Earth? If it was 93 million miles away, it would light up the entire surface evenly, the entire half of the Earth. But this is a local light. What is it? I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's God. Who knows? Have you, have you spoken to other flat earthers and try to get their feedback on this topic? <laughs> have I? That's all I do. <laughs> That's all no, I do, no, Elena. The consensus of, of other, other people who have done their own sort of research, when you come together, are you all like, we don't understand this? It's, it's. About the stars. Well, the, one thing that we we know it's small, it's close, um, that we're not spinning, that it is moving. Uh, mm -hmm. I think everyone believes it's not physical. And uh, mm -hmm. we let me share um, a video with you guys. And um, this is really really interesting. So first, before I show you this video, <clears throat> if you take a magnifying glass and magnify it to you know a little dot where you're burning anthills. All the guys know what I'm talking about, right? Um, it looks like a little tiny sun, right? You, you all take a magnifying glass and focus the light. It look, look at that focus light. It kind of looks like a sun. And if you looked at it and you really, you know, it was on a, a, a nondescript background, you would kind of like, it looks like a sphere, right? And you, you've lifted up 10 inches in the air. Well, it disappears, but that focus point of energy is still in the air, just 10 inches higher, okay? So it's in the air. So I think that the dome is reflecting in and, um, and uh, it's, it's showing us uh, a, a, a focus point of energy. So in the app, I'm gonna go to um, the question mark, I'm gonna go to eclipses, and, and then I'm gonna go to, where's my video? So this is an eclipse that I filmed, okay? So this, this is, um, all right, let me just move this. All right, so on the left is me simulating an eclipse. And on the right is the actual eclipse I saw in 2017, um, where down at Todd's Point, I filmed that. And there's a lot of chemtrails in the air, so it was easy to film because it wasn't, it was kind of blocked a little bit. But um, somebody in Michigan filmed this when they were filming the eclipse. Now we see that, that, that lens flare jumping all over, but the one that says not a lens flare, what is that? It's pinned to the sun. 
So it's not a lens flare. It's eclipse, the, the amount that the eclipse was, which was like almost 85, 90% at that point. But um, on the left, where we see the bright spot, that's the sun being eclipsed, but the it's just blowing out the lens. So you can't really see it. You'd have to, you know, he's got to turn down his aperture. But he had his aperture opened all the way and he could see something kind of behind the sun and it's being eclipsed just like the sun, same orientation and everything, okay? So, so what is it? And I say, it's the real sun or what they call the spirit sun. And it's where the sun outside or within the firmament above where we are, um, that's the source and it's projecting the sun um, that we see. This is the sun that we see. That is the real sun. So whenever there's an eclipse, let me just pause this for a second. Whenever there's an eclipse, you never see the moon approach the sun or exit the sun. You only see the eclipse. And even during a total eclipse, no one has ever seen the moon. You can't zoom in and see any features on the moon. There's a couple of fake pictures, but no one ever sees the features on the moon. And that's because the moon isn't in front of the sun. The moon is out, the, the real moon is outside of the firmament and it has no light on it. So it or one of it, the nodes of it are, are, um, are uh, blocking the sun. So I'm gonna show you how I created this, which looks just, this is, so back here, this is my sun source and here's my eclipse coming in. And this is what we see, this is in our sky, okay? And you can never see what's behind it or because the sun is so bright, you can't see it, but during an eclipse, you can see it if you look. And and so <clears throat> that was me making my eclipse. But I said, hey, what if the sky is a little more transparent than my paper towel sky? So what I did is I did it with some thinner tissue paper and watch what happens, okay? Watch what happens. So I'm creating my eclipse the same way. And here comes the eclipse from the left side it's going to eclipse it. And if you look to the right, you can see the source of that projection, right? There's the source. And then we compare it to the whole thing. Looks exactly the same. What do you think about that? It's pretty mind blowing. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so that's what I think is going on. But again, if you're trying to prove the flat earth, you don't have to go beyond where we're allowed to go, which is as high as we can reach or beyond the shoreline of Antarctica to prove it. But, you know, we we have made mainstream science or scientism uh, move the, what I call, move the globe post, right? They we People say, you know, I see curvature from an airplane. And, and we're like, no, you don't. It's just the way your eyes work. Um, let me show you that real quick. So we see the same distance in all directions, okay? So if somebody's standing here, the, their point of convergence is the same at you know, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock. It's the same in all of those directions. And if you draw a line across it, the line will go and show you more sky. That's not the curvature of a sphere. It's just the limit of your vision. We see in a circle, put your head in the middle of a hula hoop right at eye level and that, that curve is the limit of your vision, okay? And so that's how we see. It's just, if you went up higher, you'd see farther. You wouldn't see over the curve, you would just see farther, all right? Um, where was I going with that? I was talking about... Uh, oh. When you're in a plane, you see the oh. curve. Yeah, yeah, so, oh yeah, so they're moving the globe post. So, so the, the question is, you know, you think you see a curve, but you're seeing that same curve. Sometimes it's a little below your eye level just because the thickness of the atmosphere kind of makes, makes sky a false horizon. You're because you, because when you look through the atmosphere, you can't just see forever. It, 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 it blocks your vision. So um, where is my airplane? Um, so, at a, so plane flying at 39,000 feet, according to globe math, your horizon should be 242 miles away from you. Okay, um, the drop would be 39,050 feet of drop at that distance, according to globe math. Well, you have to add these numbers together because the plane's already this high. 
plus that much drop, right? The drop, if you're standing on the ground, 242 miles, the, the drop would be, would be that uh, 242, would be the 39,000 feet, 39,050 feet. So on an airplane flying that high, the horizon should be 78,050 feet below you. 78,050 feet. That's higher than the U-2 spy plane flies, okay? 70,000 feet is high, but you can on an airplane, look out the, the window on your left side, look out the window on your right side. If the plane's flying level, you'll see the horizon at eye level. Draw a line between those horizons. It goes right between your eyes because it's at eye level. And you have to believe that both of those horizons are, are, are 78,000 feet below you. That's insanity, okay? That's just, that's just crazy. Do you, so do you think that there's a dome? I do. I do. But there doesn't necessarily, listen, if you look at, um, I believe that there's water above and water below and God separated the waters from the waters. Is there a physical dome? Is it an energetic dome? Is it made of glass? Is it made of diamonds? I do couldn't tell you. Do we have our own dome? I mean, it's possible we keep, like each consciousness might have its own dome. Absolutely. You, you've nailed it. It's, we call that our personal atmospheric dome. So the way that works is, and this is a little harder for some people to grasp, but we see, um, you can't see forever. You can't see, if you're in a pool that's 100 yards long, you can't see the other end of the pool, even if the water's perfectly clear, because the light cannot push through uh, the water, you know, the light that's bouncing off the wall on the far side. So you can't see forever. So our personal atmospheric dome is as far as we can see in all directions, okay? And that's how we perceive um, the world and the sun and the moon manifest within that dome. So here is, here is um, this is a, a reflections program. And this little point of convergence is where you would see the sun. This would be the source of the sun. And this is where you see it. So this is California. This is Connecticut, right? East coast, West coast. So watch when it comes back. Whenever the, like, this is noon now. This is noon now. This oh. is noon, noon now. So it's late in the morning, a late afternoon here. It's noon in the middle, you know, here. And it's uh, early in the morning here because the sun is coming up and over. This is east, that, that, that's west. And that's how, you, that's how we all perceive the world. So the, are those supposed to be each indiv individual those, domes? Those, those, are, those are your personal atmospheric dome. And as you move, it moves with you. It, it moves with you because that's how the 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 light of the 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 luminary that we call the sun comes into your world so we just really we just don't know anything we're just like really learning everything we, we know, know one so thing we know one how thing we work, you know, how yeah. our brains work and our consciousness works and our like, like our atmosphere of dome works we don't know any we, we, we don't know any correct we don't know a lot of it but one thing that we do know is that we don't know right? Globe people believe they know everything and they know nothing. Okay. They know nonsense, but, but, you know, a lot of flat earthers, some people say, all right, is it an extended plane? Is it, are there ponds on that plane? Are there rings on that plane? Is this the only thing? Is there a dome? Is it a high dome? Is it a flat dome? Is it, a, you know, um, these are all things that we're having discussions about, but what we all agree on is it, a spinning ball flying through an infinite space vacuum is just insanity. Um, and impossible. It's just impossible. Are there extra terra beyond where we live? You know, is it just a single dome and Antarctica is frozen? I don't believe that's the case. Um, are there more rings, right? Here's, here's something. So I, this is what I was going to say before I just remembered. They're always moving the globe post. We say, hey, we, you know, we, you, we can see that the horizon's level and Neil deGrasse Tyson comes out, you can't see it unless you go 70,000 feet. And then they, they break out this MIG fighter shot where they show us this curvature. You're, it's filmed through a curved, curved window, but they didn't realize one of their cameras wasn't going through a curved window and we can see the horizon straight and level. Then he's like, oh, you can't see it until you're 100,000 feet. And then we then they they show us the the Red Bull space jump with Neil um, with um, Felix uh, Baumgarten or whatever his name is Baum, Baumgartner, and uh, they show this totally curved crazy planet. And uh, Felix does an interview. He goes, "Yeah, I saw the curvature of the Earth." Now I don't know if he was lying or if he actually thought he saw the curvature because he expected to see it, and he was wearing a curved glass um, helmet. 
And so he thought he saw the curve. I couldn't tell you. Um, personally, I think he's lying. And the whole thing was done to brainwash the world because that was one of the their favorite things. But if I can find the image, um, here it is. So this is the, the, the picture that changed the world. Look how high he is, the edge of space. Well, we zoomed in on this picture and we can see these little rivers and all these land features. This is all New Mexico. All of it. Zoomed this in. Planet New Mexico. It's because he's got a fisheye lens. A fisheye lens, the top half curves it down. If you, if you panned up, it would turn into a concave earth. This is a flat earth, okay? So this is a, a fisheye lens. This is all New Mexico. And worse than that is the earth is spinning to the east, spinning to the east. He went up for three and a half hours. It's spinning to the east. He should have landed out in the ocean, like 3,000 miles out in the ocean. But he landed 100 miles east of where he took off. He outran the spin of the earth and landed ahead of it. Wow. <laughs> Not wow. It's like... Earth isn't spinning. <laughs> yeah. The Earth isn't spinning. And then there was also a camera inside that was when he opened the door, you could see out, and there was the horizon right at eye level. And there was a shot of him going in. That camera was on, and you could see the horizon of the field that he was in at eye level. And we overlaid them on top of each other. They're both at the exact same level with a camera that never moved. And He's supposed to be 127,000 feet in the, in the air? I don't think so. Oh, do you think that he didn't even go up that high? The whole no, thing? I think he did. I think they're just showing us. There's people that don't think he went, think they faked the whole thing. Um, I, I don't see, <clears throat> maybe they lied a little bit about the height, but um, I, I did. they just used um, fisheye, uh, you know, GoPro cameras and brainwashed the world. He did two test jumps beforehand without GoPro lenses. And... Um, they changed it for the one that they air, they televised, okay? And um, my, my thought is, and it's just me thinking, is that they were just going to do this. It's going to be a real stunt and great. And then, the, you know, the people at NASA and, the, you know, the controllers of this world, and, you know, you know, this is sponsored by Red Bull. They're like, hey, switch the GoPros. Maybe they let some people in the know. We're going to do this whole thing. People got super rich and, uh, you know, and that's it. And the, the deception goes further. Here's the thing. David, oh, sorry. Go, one, David, one, I have one, a quick question. Go ahead, Sharon. So, I mean, this might be off topic, topic but the time that the, um, the capsule exploded when they actually had laymen on it, is that why you think that that accident happened? They can't have laymen know what was really going to be? Are you talking about the Challenger? Yeah. Yeah, so nobody has ever been on a rocket shot into space. Not even that that, that was totally faked. It was done to traumatize kids and to kick the can down the road farther. We found six of the seven astronauts. They work for universities. They all have the same name, same birth date. They say they're, that they're the identical twin of their other, of their brother or sister. And the funny thing is, not one of them showed up to their brother and sister's funeral. Oh my goodness. That is so weird. Well, it's not weird. That's, it's because it's the same person. They're still alive. Yeah. This guy, Dick yeah, Scobie, he had a he had a corporate a, com a company called um Cl Cows and Trees or something. I'm not sure what it was. Maybe it was a cheese company. And on his website, we found after we found him, <clears throat> we found his <clears throat> excuse me, we found his website, and the animation on the opening of his website was a cow in a field taking off like a rocket with smoke coming out of his rear, doing loop de loops, leaving the same pattern that the challenger happened oh, and wow. so we started making videos on this bam website disappears right they're constantly wow. moving you know hiding things we expose them they say oh you know once we showed them so the the red bull getting back to the red bull the the neil degrasse tyson went on some talk show and goes you can't see the curvature from that high he was talking about it he goes that was done with a fisheye lens he had to admit it and he goes you can't see the curvature from that high so now at one hundred twenty-seven thousand feet you can't see the curvature how much higher we can't get any higher than that so we can't prove them wrong i mean they can say anything they want and and people are just like oh yeah you know the lie is too big you know right but you catch nasa lying once like this they got some fresh lemons on the space shuttle and they were playing with it and look what happens look at his hand look really carefully his hand goes right through the lemon because that is not real wow it's not real 
That's all you need to say, we never went to the moon. That's all you need. David, isn't there also a photograph of the second Challenger explosion or a second spaceship explosion and it's the same seven people? The same seven people died again? Yeah. Like they didn't, NASA doesn't say that. They pretend they're different people. But I, I think I've seen that a couple of years ago. You know, I haven't seen that. I, I don't know. I, was there another explosion where the, oh, all the crew died? I don't remember that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. But <clears throat> you know, I have a lot of Mandela effects. So things happen to me all the time. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Um, this, this is one when people say, well, how come I can't see Europe from the, you know, from New York. And the answer is two things. One it's what, what are you going to, what's big enough that the angular size you could see. But the other thing is it's our personal atmospheric dome. Again, you can't see something unless light is bouncing off of it or it's, or, or it's, um, has it, it is his own light and prove that turn the lights off. There's no light. You can't see anything. So here's, uh, um, Canigou, France. No. Um, and that uh, wait, Canigou. No, no, the Alusia, France, and out here, 175 miles away, is Mount Canigou, but you can't see it because it's over the curve, according to the Glober. But we say you can't see it because the atmosphere is too thick. It's like looking across a deep swimming pool. But on two days a year, when the sun is, is in between its migratory path between the two tropics, it lines up perfectly with Mount Canigou, and it backlights it. And look. There it is. The very top where the mouse is right there should be a mile below the, below the horizon. If this was a physical horizon, it's not, it's an optical horizon. Um, it should be a mile below it. And mainstream science, their, their oh explanation is refraction. They say that the sun set already, the mountain is a mile below the curvature and it's refracting up and stopping right at your eye level. What? That's their explanation. There, it's the dumbest thing ever. There, but they can just say that because they how do you know? Lot. There's lots of things like this where they, it should be much lower, and they always say it's like a mirage. Right. Or, that no mirage. The, how does a mirage block the actual sun? Well, yeah, okay? that's what they say, though. So yeah. But they say it's already down and it's refracting up, and that they throw some crazy math numbers at you, and you know, math is not reality. Math is math is not reality. Oh my God. Questions? I, I actually have a question. How does mainstream science tr explain how they've measured how far away all the different planets and things are? Yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> they don't. They um they say they start with a lie, come up with a with a with a with a number, and then they use that to justify everything else. The re the way they discovered that the sun is ninety three million miles away. Occasionally, Venus transits the sun, goes in front of the sun. And Venus is about the same size as Earth. So they have someone on the East Coast and someone on the West Coast. And it starts first for the person on the East Coast or whatever one starts first. And then they time it. And they say, OK, well, it started first for this person, started, and it ended at this time. And then they do some math. And they say it's 93 million miles away. Problem with that equation is they said Venus is the same size as Earth. Who told them that? Venus could be the size of a beach ball, okay? We don't know. I mean, it's not a planet. It's not what they tell us. Um, so it's all mumbo jumbo. You know, they tell us that the way they can tell the distance to a star is they look at a star in uh, January and then six months later in June, they look at that star again. Six months later, we're 186,000 miles on the other side, um, on the other side of the sun. And they say the parallax, they can see, you know, a star that's in front of it and a star that's behind it, you know, it's, it's like this. And then when you, when you move over here, the, par the parallax changes, like it's here and you move over and you have different parallax, right? So, you know, if I go like this, if I move, the parallax changes, right? Um, so there's parallax, when we're going from uh, 186 million miles to the other side of the sun, but we ignore the 4.4 billion miles we travel every year and the stars never change. They double speak. They, 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 they say nonsense. And then they deny their, they say something else that just negates it. 
And then people just short circuit. They're like, oh, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't get a physics degree. And, you know, physics, um, there's real physics, there's real science, but astronomy is pseudoscience. Astrology is the real science. So how about, do we not have people that are like in college or even high school students saying, just saying that, like, but how did they know, be, like, are, isn't anybody just questioning these things? And then what happens? Yeah, they, they get thrown out of school. They lose their funding. Um, they don't, you know, they don't get admitted to whatever, <clears throat> whatever courses. Um, there are people, but they, they, it's hard to get any information out there. Um, and anyone that's established, if they open their mouth, they, their, their career is ruined forever. Do we just lose her? So I have a question about the space shuttle. Go. So you're saying it did go up and blow up, right? Well, I'm saying that uh, the space shuttle is, is a bunch of nonsense. What do you want to ask? So what happens to all these space shuttles they say are going up? Where are they yeah. going? They're going up yeah. and around or something? <clears throat> <laughs> nope, they crash right into the Bermuda Triangle area. That's why they, they've, they've demonized that area so there's no boats in there. Um, the rockets, no one is ever close to the rocket. And if you look, um, think about this. This is the SR-71. It goes Mach 3.2, right? 2,193 miles per hour. Any faster, it'll start to rip apart. I think this is a picture of the, the front actually warping because it's going too fast. Okay. This thing is like a razor blade, right? This is like a giant garbage can, but it goes multiple times faster, okay? It goes 22,000 miles per hour. But this thing rips apart when it's going 2,193 miles per hour, okay? This is nonsense. NASA is the largest owner. No, NASA owns all of the big helium companies in the world. NASA is the largest consumer of helium in the world. This orange tank is a Macy's Day Parade balloon. It is helium. This thing is a blow up model. These are rockets that give a little bit of thrust just to propel it up. But if you watch an actual launch of, um, of the space shuttle. If you just watch it and think about what's going on, you realize that it's complete and total nonsense. I'm gonna show you um, a launch and I'm gonna break down what's happening. Think about this. We've all been in a hurricane or a tropical storm. It's pretty friggin' scary. I don't know if, if everyone has, but um, you know, 200 mile, 200 mile hour wind is pretty fr is crazy. The 200 mile hour wind will knock houses over. Right, a tornado, which is like a big tornado, is like 300, 350 mile an hour winds. That'll pull cement out of the ground. That'll turn telephone poles and trees into toothpicks. It'll tie metal, uh, you know, it'll tie um, light posts into knots. Okay, and that's just air temperature. This rocket. Okay, first let's let's, let's examine what's going on here. This makes it look like these people. They're going to show you in a second. Look and think about this fence for a second. Um, it makes you think that the people that they're going to show right here are close. These people are twice the distance from here to Long Island. Okay, you try to look at Long Island, you can't, you can't, you can't see anything. Right, that's how far away they're. They're over eleven miles away. Okay, these people are not right there. This is all editing for your mind. It's really far away. It's oh, yeah. Far away. That's not even, they're so far away, they can barely see the shuttle and they and there's trees in front of them anyway. Now think David, of this. This David, is David, anybody who, who's not on mute, can you please just mute your phone because yeah. there's so much noise coming up. So, right. so, so that thing is shooting out superheated thrust at like 20,000 miles an hour. Okay, think of what a 300 mile per hour hurricane, I mean, tornado does. 20,000 miles per hour and not that fence doesn't even shake. It, does, it would be atomized. Everything below that thing would be destroyed. This thing weighs 4 million pounds. And if you watched before it took off, it bounced. It bounced like a bouncy house, okay? So now this thing is shooting up. Everyone's going, ooh, ah, because they see this, this smoke show. Okay, this is just a smoke show. And it immediately turns upside down because the, the, the tank is lighter. That's why it goes on its back and it goes downrange, okay? Now watch, these boosters are gonna come off and they tell us these are the solid boosters, solid fuel boosters, and they can't turn them off. 
Now, this thing's going over 17,000 miles an hour right now. 17,000 miles an hour. And when these things come off, how come they don't shoot off beyond it? And how come they can go sideways and keep up with it? That's insane. That's just the aerodynamics of them going sideways. There's no, this isn't thrust. This is a light show. And now watch right there. When you see that burst, if you listen to the video, you can just Google um, launch of space shuttle. You'll find this, um, this exact video. You hear it at the exact same time as you see it. Well, it's 30 miles downrange. Okay. Think about thunder and lightning. If it was only 20 miles downrange, you wouldn't hear it for 90 seconds after you saw it. 90 seconds. It's a minute and a half. You hear it at the exact same time because it is a, it's just a, it's just a balloon. It's just an edited movie. Here it is on a windy day. This thing weighs over 4 million pounds and it's blowing in the wind like a, like a blow up bouncy house at the carnival. Okay. This is a balloon. Now, how can I say that? Well, the story is this thing is falling back to earth empty. It weighs over 40,000 pounds. It's made of steel and it's going to burn up before it hits the ground. Well, the clouds look pretty darn close. Now watch right here. You can see a little handkerchief blow by. Watch. Okay. There it goes. You see it? So that shows you how fast this thing is moving. It's barely moving. There's another one that's going to come by over here in a minute. Um, this is being filmed out the window of the space shuttle that's on its way into orbit. So it's going faster than 17,000 miles an hour. And somehow it's filming this thing falling back to earth. How come it's not getting smaller? How come it's not falling at over, over a thousand miles an hour? Okay. This is insane. You with me? This is a helium balloon. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. So when they did the last space shuttle launch, like yeah. my husband, we took our son Gorda to watch it. Yeah. And we did stood on that shore that was way far away and watched this thing off in the distance. And I will tell you, I never met you. I never even thought of this idea before at that time. And I watched this happen. And I watched this little tiny thing go up into the sky and then it disappeared. And I really just like in me was like, this doesn't make sense. Like, where did it go? I was asking my husband all kinds of annoying questions, which of course he does the thing of, you know, trying to explain it without any explanation. And honestly, just like hearing you explain this gives me this feeling that like I could even tell at the time watching it that something was wrong. It didn't even look credible. I don't know if that makes sense what I'm trying to share. No, it but. makes perfect sense because you're watching a magic trick. Sometimes they launch, um, sometimes they launch miniatures. Sometimes they launch like with a space shuttle, they launch this big thing. Um, sometimes they don't launch anything and it's all CGI. Watch this SpaceX launch. This, I call it the two-pack rocket. It's a hologram. It's not real, right? And they always cut, 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 edit, 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 right? This is not real. Wait. <clears throat> So this thing's going and there was a glitch and watch what happens. So this is a hologram and watch the top of the rocket. It's gonna disappear, okay? And they have no excuse for this. <clears throat> and they took down this video as soon as they noticed it, <clears throat> as soon as we pointed it out, there it goes, I'll, I'll zoom in. Explain that. It's a hologram. It's a projection. So can I ask, are there just very few people involved then in NASA total? Like they don't employ anyone or are they just, are, are people there convinced that these lies are for the greater good? Like what is their makeup? And then what is their, um, what's their story, I guess? Yeah. Well, they, they tell us that there's millions and not millions that, you know, there's a huge number of people that work in NASA. Um, it's a lot smaller number than that, that and SpaceX. Uh, and there, the, some people, there, there are people in the know there. I don't know what percentage, um, but there are people that are, are, everything is compartmentalized. You're on a need to know basis. Um, there was an interview with one of the people that was in the control room and the person said, yeah, we practice these missions so many times in simulations that when the real mission happens, we can't tell the difference. 
because the real mission is a simulation also. They're not seeing anything. Like I showed you that Mars landing footage. They're all looking at a screen. You know, they're looking at an animation. Now they don't say it's an animation. It clearly is, <clears throat> but they never admit it. So your mind never really registers that fact. And my question was when that Mars landing, um, why didn't they, uh, what, what would happen if the data came back, said that it crashed? Did they have an animation of it crashing? No, they never do. I mean, the, the, the stories of what's going on in space are so ridiculous. It, it, it's mind blowing, okay? Um, at the beginning, somebody asked about satellites and satellites are a joke. Arthur C. Clarke fantasized about satellites in a book. And then a couple of years later, all of a sudden we have satellites. That's called predictive programming. Uh, it primes your mind. Um, this is what's going on. All of these things are falling around the earth at just the right rate where the curvature drop is the same as its drop, right? So they're all being held down by gravity, but they're going just the right speed where they just stay in a perfect orbit while the earth is corkscrewing through space, okay? Ridiculous, right? And then they have certain, um, certain, uh, um, they have certain, satellites that they call they're in a Lagrange point. I don't have the video. I don't think I have the video of it where it's just far enough away from earth and close enough to the sun where both gravities just keep it in the perfect spot. And that way it can film the earth. Okay. And, and this is the garbage that they show us stuff like this. Right. But meanwhile, you got to remember the earth is corkscrewing through the, through the solar system, the galaxy. And somehow we, we managed to stick a, a, a satellite right in the perfect spot. Imagine getting a BB, you know, a little metal ball and two magnets and trying to get it right in the perfect spot where it doesn't go either way. Good luck. Yeah. And this is, this is not a cartoon. Well, it is a cartoon, but they showed that, that moon transit as real. Here it is. <clears throat> this is what they showed us as real. cartoons it's all cartoons no one has ever shown any proof of the globe we've been told the earth is a globe and they just show us cartoons right this is the moon orbiter the 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 lander this is the moon lander whoops this is the moon lander that is coming back to meet with the orbiter there's two grown men in diapers in there okay this is nonsense. This is a little airfix model in a dark room. <clears throat> what about other countries? You know, like Russia or the- Russia, China, Europe, all of them. They're all in on it together. They're all run by the same people. The countries are. are just okay. for division. I mean, I yeah, the countries are just for division. Um, now, I don't know, like some of these smaller countries that, you know, there could be some people, some infighting. I'm not sure what it is, but they're all in on it. All the countries that say they have space programs, um, they're, all, they're all in on it. Ch oh, China is uh, just built a space station, right? Do, do you know that? The, China built a space station. It magically appeared. It's in the sky right now. And there's astronauts on it. Okay. Just like our space station, um, which would be the most incredible production a construction project ever done okay and all of these parts for our space station were made by different companies and different countries okay and somehow it just got assembled in space and there's not a single photo or video of it being assembled this would be the most videoed photographed construction project in world history now if you know anything about building things you have to test them it was never constructed on earth you know, two different countries built these modules and they built different connectors. So then they had to make a third piece to connect them. Okay. Because they, they use different designs, but they never tested on earth. They put it in a space and built it without ever testing it on earth. Okay. This is the only evidence we have that it was built. And this is, this is a cartoon. This is admittedly a cartoon. Okay. And why are all of the important things on the outside? that they always have to do a spacewalk, an eight hour spacewalk to tighten two nuts or something, okay? Look at a submarine, everything's on the inside and there's a crew of like 50 or a hundred guys that are constantly fixing seals and everything. Well, this is in the vacuum of space. This stuff would be, there's three, four people on there and then they do everything. They monitor everything. This is nonsense. This is a physical impossibility. This is 
the elite laughing at us that we believe this nonsense. So the people in those videos are just all paid actors? 100%. Like these guys. Th this is a glitch that happened at the end of a, one of their live streams. And everything that was floating, including them, glitched out. These guys, they're always flipping their microphone around and their CGI hat and stuff. This guy goes floating around in the background. I zoom in on him. The, the layer that was supposed to take out his harness and wire wasn't working. Okay. And then the NASA comes back and go, well, you know, sometimes our guys are, are strapped in harnesses for safety. Does that make any sense? Safety hanging from a harness. So wouldn't the wire wrap around your neck because there's no weight, you know, they're, they're, they, they fake it in different ways. Sometimes they're hanging from harnesses. Sometimes this ball is filled with helium. It's real. It's neutrally buoyant. It's a beach ball filled with helium. This thing is not real. Watch, I'll show it again. It's not there. Now it's there. This was a live thing and they beamed it in and it's called leap motion augmented reality. And this is what they're doing. She is seeing these objects and she can manipulate them in real time and then they can render it for us to see. This is done in a zero G plane, but this guy, there's no right hand turn on a zero G plane. So they faded him in. His head was transparent. Watch, you can see right through his head on this thing on the wall here. You only have to catch them faking once and, uh, and, you know, and then you can unwind it all the way. These guys, look, you're in space. Why does everyone need an industrial sized belt in space? Are their pants going to fall down? They're hanging from waist harnesses. They're trying to hold themselves, you know, and they're, they're horrible at it. Look at their, look what's going on underneath their pants. He's hanging from wires. You can see the center of gravity is at his waist. And whenever they do flips, they flip, they pivot perfectly from the waist. Like if you were in space and you went like this, you wouldn't do a flip. You'd go taut, you'd go spiraling out of control um, into, you know, into the back of the room or whatever. You wouldn't pivot on a pivot point, right? It's so easy to fake being in uh, the space station and they do a horrible job at it. Matter of fact, they do all their spacewalks here in the National Buoyancy Lab. This is a, a replication of the space station underwater. And they, they have green screens in here, okay? And they say, oh, that's just to make it more real for the astronauts, I'm like, for the from their training. I'm like, you don't see, you see a green screen during that. Like right now, I see a green screen. You know, I don't see this, okay? And if you look up here, their logo, this is a scuba diver handing a power tool to a Vitruvian man with a rocket trying to break through a dome, okay? This is their friggin' logo. I mean, they, they rub it in our faces. They don't just stick it in our faces. They rub it in our faces. Do you ever do presentations for children? I would love to. Yeah. And, and then how would you, because our children are naturally brainwashed, right? By like, you know, even Legos, they have the space sets and the, all Every that. So everything. So how do you teach that to a young child? Like, and not have them, I don't know. What do you recommend for that? Um, that is that again, that is really tough because kids are so brainwashed. You go to a 10 year old, 11 year old, tell them the earth is flat, their heads explode because they've been programmed. That should tell you something too. Before you can talk, everything is globe, globe, globe. Um, every, everything they, the Sesame street, it's got astronauts on it. Uh, good night moon, all the books, everything. It's all globes. And when you go to school, there's a globe in the front of the class. There's a globe in the front of the class. And then. One of the first worksheets you bring home is the orbits of the planets and the moons. And you have to memorize all that. I remember having that as a kid and I'm seeing little kids, you know, first grade or kindergarten or whatever. I'm not sure what grade, I guess it's first grade. Um, one of the, one, this one of the first worksheets that you bring home, check it out. And it, it's all brainwashing because if you believe that you're spinning out of control, lost in space on this heliocentric world, um, what it does is it's hiding your true who you are. It makes you insignificant. It makes you, you know, it makes you believe that you're flying through space um, in a godless or at best distant God universe, right? You're nothing. An asteroid could take you out at any moment. Um, you're just a speck amongst, on a speck of trillions of other specks in an infinite expanding 
godless universe. That's what they want you to believe. So this is getting into why the lie. They don't want you to know that you are at the center of creation, that you are powerful, that nobody has control over you. The only control over the, you they have is in your imagination, okay? And, uh, and they don't want you to know that. We could end this tyranny now if everyone just woke up. That's why I quit my job. I quit my company and I'm doing this full time because even if we get a chance, we may not get a chance to get our freedoms back with what's going on. How long are we gonna hold on to it? Um, if you're lost in space, spinning out of control, thinking that you're an insignificant spec. Um, the elite hate the creator. They, they don't want you in a situation where you have no choice but um, to, where you don't have a, a opportunity to deny a creator. I was, I guess best, you can call me an atheist because I never believed in anything. I believed in science and heliocentrism and the whole thing and space and aliens and all of that stuff. And then I discovered the flat earth because I looked, I had to look, I was forced to look. And, uh, and then I said, oh crap, it's intelligently designed. There's a creator. And that changed everything for me. So you know, and then I don't really, people go, well, who's the creator, you know, and then uh, that's your own personal journey. There's a creator, deal with it, figure it out yourself. Why the lie? They're hiding more land. They're hiding who you are. They're hiding um, everything. They're hiding, uh, you know, free energy, the creator, spirituality, more land, uh, resources, scientific knowledge. Um, and uh, that, that we're special, that we're here in the center of creation. We're not a, a random speck in the middle of nothing. Let's look at plane, plane routes for a second. So here's going, this is the route that they tell you that they go from Perth to Santiago. This would be the shortest route right across Antarctica, but this is the actual route that they go. They go from uh, Santiago to Los Angeles, to Sydney, to Perth. It takes like 27 hours or something. Or Europe, Singapore, Perth. If the earth was a globe, you would just go boop and you'd be there in a few hours, okay? 39 hours. That's how, that's how long it takes because they go this way, right? Makes no sense on a, on a, uh, on a globe. Here's um, Buenos Aires to Cape Town. Pretty short, boom, right across nine hours, you're there. Nope, they go all the way up here. They go all the way to the north to Amsterdam and all the way down, 29 hours. Got a few hours of layover in there. It should just take maybe nine hours, but you can't because this is not how the world is set up, right? Um, how about you, my husband was saying this, that flight they go around the globe to make it shorter to go to china or something what's happening there um well it's not it's not that they call it the great circle route and what that is is um you can let me let me pull up a map to sh show you um let me show you this first though the this is uh taiwan to los angeles and this is the route that they tell you they take this is the route that makes sense on a globe but right about here here's hawaii there was a medical emergency and the plane had to land and so the pilot didn't land in Hawaii. He didn't continue over here. He went a thousand miles out of the way, a couple thousand miles out of the way to Alaska. Why did he go to Alaska? And, and the answer is because this is the actual plane route. Taiwan, emergency, Alaska is right there. Hawaii is all the way out here. <clears throat> so this is, this is one of 16 emergency landings that absolutely prove flat earth. This book here, this guy documented 16 emergency landings that are ridiculous on the globe. Ridiculous, every single one of them. And then if you line up, a, draw a straight line from the origin airport to the, to the destination airport, the emergency is the, the place they chose to land is right on that line every single time. So what about all these pilots? Is it just the way they're schooled? Do they not realize this stuff? I don't know, like- Good question. So. So again, in my app, just hit what about pilots and scientists are they all in on it? There are lots of testimonies in there, but um, a lot of pilots have no idea. They just, they, they just take off and land, the plane flies itself. Um, they look out the windows, you know, they 
think the earth is giant just like we all did and uh they think they see curvature and that's the end of it they don't really think about it they just do their jobs they're bus drivers okay and they don't even have to drive the bus they just have to land it and um um there's there's lots of pilots now the southern pilots they all figured it out Qantas pilots out of Australia the southern flight you know, in the north um there's lots of um you know, a, a flight path in the north isn't that much different than a flight path on, on a globe Earth versus a, a a flat Earth. Okay, in the north, you know, it, here you go from um, from America, and you can cut across the north and go over to Japan or China. Right? You can go west. West is a circle, remember, and end up over in the Far East again. Right? You can go east which is a circle and you end up in the far East. Well, this would be the shortcut, the straight line over and they call that the great circle route. Nope. It's not the great circle route. It's just a straight line on a flat earth map. It's a straight line. Amelia Earhart. This is her trip. She went East or West, whatever direction she went. And she just basically made a big circle around the lake. We live in the world pond. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. It surrounds us. It's the container of our pond. Large bodies of water at rest lay flat. There's no proof of the globe. So my son had asked me about sunrise and sunset, like what's happening when, you know, like when it good, kind good. of disappears. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and that, it, so. Come here, Anthony. Wait, yeah, so, here. yeah, so, so, um, uh, and then uh, let me give you a little analogy and then I'll show you, um, how it actually works and, and a couple of different ways. So imagine you're sitting in a field, um, five feet, well, a couple of feet from a, a five foot high fence. You're sitting on the ground, five foot high fence. Well, the fence is over your, the, the top of the fence is over your eye level. Right. So now you're going to move 50 yards away from that fence. And you're gonna look at that fence, the fence is the top of the fence is gonna be right at your eye level. That's due to perspective. It looks like it's at your eye level. Now, somebody's standing on the other side of that fence, and here, here's their head, and their, their head's popping up over the fence. Okay. And it looks like it's at eye level, but when they walk away, their head's gonna disappear. See that? That's due to perspective. Right. So when we look across the sky, like we, we live here right in Greenwich and we look um, we look up at the sky when there's spotted clouds like yesterday, a beautiful day for this. And you see the deck of clouds and those clouds are 5000, 10,000 feet above you, whatever height they are. Then you look out of New York City over the sound and it looks like the clouds are touching the water. And that's just 25 miles away. It looks like they are touching the water. So now when you're looking at all the clouds beyond that, they're all stacking up. And they, they literally become what I call the atmospheric deck of opacity. So let me show you how that works. Um, as the sun moves away, um, it looks like it's going down. I'm trying to find, oh, here it is. So here's a picture of the sun moving away. And I added these clouds. This is the one over your head. This is the one near New York City. It merges with the horizon as the sun moves away, just like that head walking beyond the fence. It looks like it's at eye level, but this is still high up in the sky and the sun just looks like it's setting. Let me show you my, um, I did an experiment ex showing this and this'll, this'll let, it, let it sink in. So I call this my flat earth kitchen. So my counter is the flat earth. This line is level, it's the path of the sun and I'm just running this sun across this line. Now we're viewing it from a, a celestial point of view. We're viewing it from the same height as the sun. Now this is uh, either mountains or this could just be the atmospheric deck of where all the clouds merge together and merge in with the horizon. Now I'm gonna show you a camera that's on the flat counter from the other side and here goes the sun. Here is the same thing again from the other side from a terrestrial point of view. If I said, is this line level? You'd say, no, it's not, it's going down. And look, it's going below this line, this, 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 this deck and you can't see it. Now look at the line. It looks like it's going straight down almost and it's level. And this line looks like it's a horizon for you because it all merges together and it becomes the horizon. Now watch, here it is. Here's a real sunset. You would think the horizon's right there, but it's not. 
Here's the atmospheric deck of opacity. And the sun is just going beyond where all of the clouds merge together. And when you're watching this, it looks like it's going behind the horizon because this space right here is too small for you to see. But I zoomed in with a camera and that's what it looks like. Got it? But, but then let me show you some other things. Um, there's, there's certain places and, and with certain weather conditions um, where the sun doesn't set like that. It, it just goes away, um, if I could find it. <clears throat> and this, you can tell that the sun is moving away and it's shrinking um, due to perspective. Well, look at this one first. Here's one in, uh, I think this is Bulgaria. And what is the sun doing? Is it moving away? Or are you falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound? Okay. Falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound? I don't think so. The sun is just clearly moving away. All right. So now I'm ready. I I'm trying to really concentrate here. Explain um, the concept the of the earth. Go ahead of the earth and what we were being told that why the south is warmer you can grow more food the north is colder we're spinning on a to explain that so elena imagine you and i uh it's december and we're sitting in the field at north mayana's 20 feet apart okay and then somebody comes above you they got a long pole and they got a a uh, nice big heat lamp and they're holding it 10 feet over your head. You look up and you're like, ah, I feel the heat and that, and it's high in the sky for you. Okay. Right. It's high in the sky. Now I'm 20 feet over the other side. I look at that heat lamp and it's not above me. It's lower in the sky. It's over there. It's farther away from me. I can't really feel the heat. I'm cold. You're warm. Okay. Now they move that lamp over to me same height ah it's high in the sky it's closer to me and you look at it and you're like it's lower in the sky farther away from you that's how seasons work okay let me show you on the app real quick so the sun right now we're at the height of our summer believe it or not the sun is moving away and we're going back towards colder times Right now, it just, look, it just went over Miami, Southern California, Mexico. It's hot there because the sun is high above them, okay? Look over here in Australia, it's cold. It's colder because it's farther away, but six months later, the sun migrates all the way out to the Tropic of Capricorn. It's now December. It's high over their head. They're having their winter. They're having their summer. We're having our winter because it's farther away, just like that heat lamp thing I showed you. Seasons happen not because of the tilt of the earth, that's ridiculous, because the sun is farther away. When it's farther away, it's lower in the sky. When it's closer, it's higher in the sky. Thank you so much for the visual. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Do you guys all follow that? Seasons make no sense on a flat earth because at sunrise, it should be in June, at sunrise, it should be freezing because at sunrise, we're not that 23.4 degrees tilt, we're at an 89 degree tilt. It's as far as it could be. It's as low as it could be on the horizon. And you can still feel the heat if you're down at Todd's point. You can feel the heat on your face. And in the helio nonsensical BS model that they say we live in, the sun is three and a half million miles farther from us than it will be in December. Three and a half million miles farther. And at sunrise, I can feel the heat on my face right now. And then in December, at noon, when the sun is as high as it is for that day, I can look at the sun and I can't even feel the heat on my face. And we're three and a half million miles closer, more direct, closer, nonsense. It's because the sun is farther away. This is our winter right here. This is our winter. Six months later, the sun will move back in, all the way back into our summer. And there it is. Now look, it's going right over Miami. It's why it's hot in Miami. Now look where we are. We're, we're up here. The sun's pretty close. Nice. That's why we're having our summer. It's super hot in Miami. It's super hot in Mexico. Because the sun's going right over them. Seasons only make sense on a flat earth. If you go into the app and you click what about seasons, there's some great videos in here um, that if you watch them, you're like, wow. 
they get it, but you know, you won't find them on YouTube because they don't want you to see these. Um, here's something else to, to look at. And I think I, I think I, when we had our group, I explained this. If you're here in the Arctic in the middle, the sun is doing what? It's arcing around you. Arctic, it's arcing. If you're out here in Antarctica, it's antarking away from you. It's not antarking, it's not arcing around you. Antarctic in the arc in the Antarctic and arcing in the Arctic. Right? Very cool. What about ozone? Like the ozone layer? Do you, what do you say about that? Um what do you want me to say about it? Like, is it like, no, is there really an ozone layer? I mean <laughs> uh, there might I, you know what there there could be. Uh, I don't believe that there's a hole in the ozone. I believe that we should definitely not pollute or screw up this place, but nature will fix everything if we allow it. We shouldn't pollute. That's it. All the climate change, all of that is nonsense, right? No one's addressing the spraying of our skies. I'm not even saying who's doing it. Is it the governments or is it something above the governments? Okay. We don't know. We don't know what it is. Um, is it to control weather? Well, that's the story that they tell us. Therefore, I don't believe that. Um, you know, they're, they admit that they're doing all of that. So climate change, everything, anything that NASA says, discount it 100%. Okay. So the whole ozone hole, um, it's nonsense. You know, the whole thing with there's a, there's a solar flare and it's going to hit us and it could cause nonsense. It's all nonsense. Sunspots, those are real. We go through these cycles of sunspots and eclipses. Those mark the changing, uh, the, the completion of cycles. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on and they don't want us looking at that. That's why the government is wonderful and they give us those glasses that blind us and they say, don't look at the, at the, at the, at the eclipse. I looked at all of the eclipses for the last few years and my eyes have gotten better, not worse. Um, the same thing happened with my husband after we spoke uh, last time um, and he looked at the eclipse and he had always had this like um, blue like little dot in his eye where he couldn't fully see and after he looked at the eclipse it's now resolved. Crazy right? Insane. Yeah it's insane. It's like everything is the opposite of what they tell us. Yeah. This, this is the one filmed in Afghanistan. This is super sped up. The sun is not going down, it's going away. The fool on the hill sees the sun going down and the eyes in his head see the world spinning around. Um, Les, uh, if any of you who've met Pauline Cantwell, she's been a, a real speaker um, against the climate and the climate change chemtrail. She, she knows all about this stuff and she's known about it for decades um, that this has been going on. I have a military paper uh, that she had given me. I have so much information her and I have both uh, kind of just shared with each other that by 20. 25 and there i believe that's the date or 2024 i have to pull it out um that the military the u.s military is that the word will own uh, the weather yeah, it's owning the weather by 2025 2025 okay so i'm not far off and they they've uh they're doing pretty good it's only 2021 and they basically own the weather yeah yeah well that that's one thing and uh who, I mean, there, there, there's more to it. The, the entire chemtrail thing is a cover. What they tell us is just a cover for what's really going on. I think there's literally a spiritual war going right on, right up on us, going on above us, right in the heavens above. Yep, I totally agree. Thank you. Yep. I agree with all of that. But when you were saying the chemtrails, what actually are there? What, what do you believe is going? What are they releasing? <laughs> um, I mean, they admit that there's strontium, barium, uh, and uh, aluminum uh, in them. Maybe there's multiple programs going on. They definitely do control the weather, but um, I think it's more of a uh, disconnecting us from source, from above, from from the heavenly realm, which is right above us. Um, go look at, you know, like yesterday, the clouds were amazing, the cumulus clouds. Ask yourself, why do clouds have a sharp edge? when there's real clouds uninterrupted. Why is this blue sky right next to a sharp edge cloud? Why don't they just spread out, right? Why don't they just spread out? What's going on? And then my opinion is that uh, these clouds that we see in the sky are there, there's some something sentient about them. You know, water holds information. 
you know, all of our, you know, the, a drop of water holds terabytes of information. Well, maybe that's a non-physical realm, right? You look at, you know, when we have these torrential downpours and hurricanes and stuff, where's all that water coming from? It's not floating in the clouds. I mean, I fly through clouds on an airplane, the windows barely get wet. So what's, what's going on there? Um, I, I think it's, it's something that's beyond what we can possibly understand. And if you watch a chemtrail, you know, if it's a beautiful day and all of a sudden the chemtrails come out and those trails get near those clouds, the clouds just do what you think a cloud would do and they just spread out and disperse. So what's going on up there? I don't think it's good. And uh, I don't think we understand it. Don't you think Dwayne Wigington has a pretty good site about the, Dan, the Dan, Dane Wigington is he's he's focused just on the climate engineering part. And um, I'm concerned about his uh, true understanding of what's going on. He's out there to to bring you. I call him a gatekeeper where he has you focusing on um, one thing where it's distracting you from the other. How about the one out in Cal, the, the, the woman out in California, her name, um, who, who's Chris, Kristen Megan? No, but they're, they're, there's uh, up in, uh, I think, Northern California. She does some fantastic exposes on on the climate and stuff. But for another time, uh, I'll have to look okay. her up. It's Elena. Oh. So what is the strategy for survival for us and for future generations if they control the weather? So like, I'm assuming that people like us shouldn't gather in one place because they could easily attack us with the weather itself. So what would you say our survival, like our chance of survival is or what the best strategy is in your perspective? You know, the, well, that's a great question. And I believe we're, they're trying to push us into <clears throat> the great reset. And uh, I think that happens every hundred years, you know, 2020, we have the COVIDs, I'll call it for YouTube. Um, I, I, even though it's going to be unlisted, I don't want them taking it down. Um, in 1920, we had the Spanish flu. Everybody was wearing face diapers. Everybody was getting this in their arm and everybody died. 60 million people. I think it was more in the United States. Um, 1820, cholera, same thing. 1720, plague. And going back beyond that, we really don't know what happened. So um, the, the people that are running this world are enslaving us. They, you know, slavery hasn't been abolished. They just made us all slaves and they put us in a prison and now glow. It's the prison for our mind. It's the globe. They don't want us knowing that we are um, incredibly powerful spiritual beings here in the center of creation. And they, they've tricked us into giving our power away. Nobody has any dominion over you. It's just in your imagination. And you know they're allowed to do what they do because they tell us what they're doing. And then we're too stupid to say no. We're too stupid to say, I do not consent. Um, then we're willingly giving it away. And it's a fine line that they, that they travel there. But um, you know, what can we do? Well, right now, the thing that I'm doing is uh, trying to wake up people as fast as I can, because I think that um, they can't do it without our permission. Just like they wanted to start all these wars in the Middle East, they couldn't do it without our permission. So they, they manufactured uh, the New York event in September, and everybody pounded the war drums, including me, and then they could go. We gave them permission. We allowed them to do it. So all of this is up to us. The problem is everyone's sleeping and they've got people smothering themselves and they can't think. And now everyone's getting the jab and they're, you know, crazy things are happening. Um, I'm still look, wondering what's going to happen in the fall. And uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. So what can we do to survive is <clears throat> just be good, <laughs> help your neighbor, prepare, uh, don't get the jab and, uh, just try to just be aware. We chose to be here. This is my opinion. We chose to be here during this time. Uh, enjoy it. It's it's crazy time. But uh, I tell you, you know the, you know the last year and a half has been crazy. But I've been having a good time. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm losing my voice. Um, so just do the best that you can do. I guess that's my advice. And be the light in the dark. Thank be the, you. Yeah, be the light. Light light destroys darkness. You can't bring uh, darkness into a room. You can turn on a light and the darkness runs. So so that's that's where we are. Uh, maybe leave the United States. <laughs> um, I don't think the United States is going to be uh, where anybody wants to be in the next couple of years. So 
But the other countries seem way worse. You know, Gosh. I thought I might go to Greece. I'm Greek. It's yeah. terrible over there. I mean, well, they can't even go outside without a piece of paper. One, one place I'm looking fined. at, like Mexico, they told us Mexico is horrible. Mexico is amazing. Nobody listens to the government. Nobody listens to the, the, the police. Um, and uh, if there's a problem, the cartel takes care of it. <laughs> hmm. I mean, if they tried to come in and force uh, jab people, uh, th those people would be dead with inside of a day without a trial. I mean, it's dangerous for for bad people. That's Mexico is dangerous. That everything they tell us is is the opposite. Like Greenland, Greenland's covered with ice. Iceland's green. Okay, everything's backwards. Wait, going back to Mexico. I mean. I don't know. I heard good things. And then, of course, I heard like people go missing you know, and stuff like that. I mean, is there. I know lots of people in Mexico and uh, they're they, they it's they're doing a heck of a lot better than we are doing here. So I'm sure there's areas of Mexico that aren't good, but there's areas of, uh, you know, Fairfield County that aren't good. Mm. David, um, I remember her name, Deborah Tavares. Deborah Tavares. Yeah, she she exposed a lot of stuff. Um, you know, the 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 the. Um, Silent war, silent weapons for for silent wars. Yeah. Uh, that's going on now. We know all about it. You know the five G that's gone up in our town alone is 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 insane. Um, um, tip for anyone: don't ever go to the J House. They have the biggest cell antenna five G yeah. setup on that roof. I brought my meter in there once, and it was it just pinned the entire time. Yeah. Yep, I saw. That. Oh my god, I was just there for one night. <laughs> you got fried. <laughs> You got oh, fried. <laughs> yeah. It'll be interesting to see, you know, over the, you know, assuming that we have a few years, um, people that are longtime employees there see how see how sick they get. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Yeah. How far do you think that radiates? How far away? All the way to your house. Yeah, I betcha, huh? <laughs> oh, but it, it gets exponentially worse as you get closer. So so again, you know. We live in this crazy world where we can do what we can do. You do the best that you can do. Like I have Wi-Fi in my house. I need it. Okay. I turn it off at night, but it, it's on during the day. <clears throat> I do my best to mitigate it. I walk around barefoot all the time. Um, you know, I do the best that I can do. Do I do all the right things? No, absolutely not. I'm wearing a smartwatch. How stupid is that? <laughs> Well, take it off. <laughs> um, I, I needed to remind, I have like interviews all day today. So I, I miss them without it reminding me because I'm stupid. Um, what else? Uh, anything, final questions before we go? When you have that children's presentation, let me know. <laughs> well, let me know. Get me a group of children. I'll talk to them. I've been trying to get into like Greenwich High School, Eastern, go into the science wing and, and like have a debate with the science teachers and the kids. Say, hey, I'm going to present something ridiculous like flat earth and then you guys defend it. You know, I think it would be a great learning lesson because I'll turn every single one of them into a flat earther. I teach my son, well, my husband teaches my son it's a globe and I say it's flat and he came up all on his own. He's like, no, it's a dome. He it's said, very good. Like, no, it's Here's the he thing. Just, Don't thing teach your kid Don't. that the earth is flat. Say, hey, this is what we think. You know, this is what they say. And let the kid figure it out. He'll figure it out. Show them both. And there's no kid that will pick the globe. I remember as a child learning in school. And I was like, mm, this doesn't make any sense. Like the access, the spinning, the... <laughs> Gravitational, I, I don't know, and it's just something I, but you know, you're in school and you're just a little kid and you just assume they know more than you and you just kind of accept it. You know, I accepted it reluctantly, believe it or not, but yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. When I started questioning it now, I was like, as a kid, I kind of knew, you know, that it didn't make sense. So the, the, let me show you this before we go. This is, um, this is a, a new video that came out recently and this is the moon. This is the craters on the moon. And you can look at this and this is a map of the earth, which is crazy. And so here's the equator. Here's the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn and the shoreline of Antarctica. And here's our magnetic center and our magnetic center moves. It wanders, it wanders. Oh. 
every it was 15 degrees every 2160 years and it does in a great year about 25,000 years it comes all the way around so we live in this melted puddle and all of this is frozen and it's going to move around over the great year and so these are the civilizations on the move this is why civilizations had just disappeared like who built the pyramids maybe they were built you know 25,000 years ago the last time the puddle was here okay so this one is this is a video that you have to watch like next rainy day make some hot chocolate you know popcorn whatever you got and watch this video so in the app if you click the web button you click the web button center right here it says the lost history of flat earth and you open that up and the top one is five hours. Now I will never watch a five hour video. I've watched it four times already. Okay. In a very short period of time, just start watching it. And it, there's, there's seven sections in there. Watch one chapter, then turn it off, go do something else and come back. Here's what's going to happen. You'll get through the first chapter. You won't turn it off. You'll watch the entire thing. Watch it, watch it. Watch it, watch it is all I can say. So that's that's in the app um, and check that out. What was the civilization you mentioned that was all, you said there was like the Qatar? Tar, tar, Tartaria. So, Qataria? Tar, Tartaria, so going tar, back. Oh, Tartaria, okay. Tartaria, so in the web button, same thing. Um, if you look on the bottom right where it says mud floods, Tartaria, um, this is a picture of them not building the transcontinental railroads, but excavating them. Hit that button, bring food and water. What about Atlantis? So I did a, a talk called the outward flow of civilizations, and it could be similar to what's going on here um, where the, if imagine, imagine if, um, you know, our sun is, is rotating in between a, 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 the tropics right here. So our sun goes out to here, in and out, right? Boom, boom. So it, this is a, its rotational path. It's melted out our puddle. What if the sun moved out here and started rotating out here? All of this froze over. Everybody would migrate outwards. Maybe the Atlanteans live out here in this outer space area. And our old sun is out here. And then a new sun is born in the center. And then a new world is here, separated from this world. Very interesting. Crazy, right? Well, I'm questioning everything these days. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a crazy conspiracy theorist. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, listen, I was already there. But this this is more new to me, you know. Here, here's um, <clears throat> the National Buoyancy Lab. Boom. And this is what they show us on TV down here. So D David, so so all of all these people that know this stuff is Sharon, um, and I mean, do they get suicided when they talk out? Does that happen a lot? You think, or I mean, there's got to be people, many people that know this. Well, there are, but the people that are in the know um, have they're they're all blackmailed in in a way for doing. You don't get to these levels of knowledge and power without doing stuff. Um, where they can co totally control you. Like, you know, people uh, in great positions of power have been, you know, they do insane satanic things that are caught on, that are on film and then they can never talk about it because that'll be exposed and, you know, their right. entire lineage will be destroyed. So that's it. But there was a, a Polish astronaut, I believe it was last year, um, that was in an interview and someone said, you know, there's a lot of people that say the earth is flat. What do you think? And he was like having a bad day and he goes, yeah, it's flat. I assure you it's flat. Nobody's been to space. And then he disappeared. Oh, no one's man. seen him. Maybe he got shut down. Wow. But Buzz Aldrin was interviewing a little girl and she goes, how come we never went back to the moon? And he goes, well, because we never went and that's the way it was. And, you know, and then he started stumbling and uh, no one's heard from him. I and mean, he's still around, but he's not saying anything right now. There's all sorts of stories. There are all kinds of whistleblowers, but it's really hard to find them. They're, they're, they're you know, you see what they're doing on the internet. They're you know, if I said this word, this tell you know, this video, even though it would be unlisted, will disappear. 
Mm -hmm. The censorship is incredible. And the other thing is, you can tell people what's going on. They've told us the patents for spraying the sky. Bill Gates says he wants to dim the sun. Okay, nobody cares. Nobody, no, no nobody bothers. Nobody cares. Nobody notices. I do, but what about Elon Musk and whatever he says he's sending somewhere? But that's all balloons again, right? Like balloons, CGI. You know, I got a, I have a, a five minute video that you all have to watch. What? Well, how about I play it right now? You up for that? You guys got five minutes? Sure. I have five minutes. Okay, let me, uh, let me just like turn that. it. Uh, let's see. Everybody else? Um, yeah, that's about all I have, and yes. You know what, I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll send you guys the video. I'll, uh, I'll drop it in the chat. Oh. And, um, and then once you see it, you'll realize that Elon Musk is 100% a fraud, uh, doesn't run any companies. He is a puppet for the controllers. And- um, So why did he speak out against the PCR test? Oh, because th th it's all about dividing. He's a good guy, he's a bad guy. No, he said this, all about division. They don't okay. care what you know as long as you're arguing with everybody next to you. Right, right, right. Okay. Got it. Um, and that's in Nuremberg. Where is yeah, it? Thanks for, thanks for sending that video to us. I appreciate it. I'm going to pop it in the chat as soon as I find it. Um, what else? Any final questions while I look this up? Well, you're looking for that. I just really thought it was so neat that we're like each our own domes and about like what we do. I just have had to lean so hard into like faith and then being more, um, protective of my dome you know when you start it's really that's how they control us through this like all this fake stuff so if you just stop if you just stop listening to them i think they really fade away like consciousness is the currency they want us scared and they want us watching them they, want, they want, us want our energy they don't just wipe us out they want us we are special we are divine they want our consciousness they want our dome to be maybe like energizing theirs or something but they want us so if we can just disconnect from what they're doing and start creating our own stuff, that's, that's right. something. And, and if you watch the news, no, none of us here watch the news and stuff, I don't think, but um, that's just to keep you in fear. You know, there it, it's to brainwash you. It, there's hypnosis in there. There's all sorts of colors and flashes and stuff. It's literally to program your mind. You know, they steer our minds with the news, which is an acronym for North, East, West, South. They're steering our minds. So I'm gonna pop this in the chat and somebody can save it, maybe email it to everybody. Where the heck is the chat? I gotta do Thank it. you that, and, uh, for everything. And you wanna watch this because it's five minutes, put it on double speed, it's two and a half minutes. Um, and you'll realize what a complete and total fraud Elon Musk is and everything that he does. Complete and total fraud, it's in the chat. Um, cool. All right. Anything else to it. mitigate the 5G since that came up? Grounding, um, you know, turn off your Wi-Fi at night and people, you know, uh, you probably all have Wi-Fi. You can, for $20 on Amazon, you can buy an infrared uh, remote power switch and uh, have it at your night table. And when you go to bed, just hit the button and it turns off your Wi-Fi um, and you'll sleep better. So... I, that's an argument with my husband all the time. I said, let's turn it off at night. And he says like to redo it or something. Like, is it really an issue? No, I mean, no, you're not, I, you're I not, you're not even shutting point. down your modem. You're just turning off the transmitter. Uh, so there's no rebooting. Just turn it off. When you get up in the morning, turn it on, press the button. Right transmitter. Your okay. Yeah. So you're buying, it's called an infrared um, light switch. It comes, they'll give you like three plugs so you can control three different things in your house. Um, and you just plug your Wi-Fi into it and then plug it into the wall. And that way you can just turn it off and it's 20 bucks. Okay. We used to have ethernet and we're renting right now. That's why we don't, but that's better too, obviously. Right. Ethernet. Uh, it's, well, you, it's mean wired. you mean wired. Cables. Wired. Yeah. 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 That, that is better. Like um, when we're on a computer, let's say. Yeah. I'm all wireless. So yeah. So can you send what that was again? I I'm, it's just, um, or I'll write it down. I'll, I'll get I'll a pen. Up. I'll look it up. Amazon. Wireless. Oh, there. Okay. Nice to see everybody. <laughs> nice to Thank see you. you. Thank you.
Thank you so much. David, thank you so much for your time. Bye, thank you, David. David. It was great seeing everyone. Bye. All right. I'm going to wait. David. Hold on. It was amazing. For those who want the, want the remote. Yeah. Um, and why do we need the remote? Just to make just it easier? Just to turn so off your Wi-Fi. So you don't, you go and unplug your Wi-Fi. No one's going to do that. You're going to be, you're going to bed just as you get into bed, turn off the switch and then your kids will scream like, what did you do? And, you know, Yeah. but you, know, you can deal with it. Um, what is your app called again? What is the app called? So the app is called the, hold on a second. So just, just, if you search, infrared, just search Wi-Fi, it was just search, not, not Wi-Fi, just search remote power off switch infrared remote power off switch there's a million of them just pick okay. one it should be around 20 dollars um cool and uh and that's that and the app is called the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app just point your phone right there point your camera right there and it'll come up on your phone All right david my my uh computer guy when he came over to the house i told him i wanted it to, my my wi-fi to automatically turn off at nighttime yeah. so he just did it so he so now, he he programmed it to turn off or did he program, put a like a christmas light timer on it you put it no he pro, he he wrote down the instructions go to this site do this do this put your hours in then hit whatever and it turns off and it does because i use my meter tester and it's not working during the hours i want it yeah. off i i personally i like the remote because you know sometimes i get up at three o'clock in the morning and i need to turn the wi-fi on so this way you can turn it on and turn it off sometimes if i'm taking a nap and no one's home i'll turn it off you know oh, oh that would be a good reason all right yeah thank you so much have to run wonderful Goodbye, everybody bye thank you thank you guys thank you oh, david bye everybody thanks. Bye. The Flat Earth Sun and Moon Clock App, a dynamic new app to teach family and friends about where they actually live. The sky is a perfect clock. The sun measures the hours and days. The moon measures the weeks and months. The star constellations measure the seasons and years. 1212 or 24 hour clock face, or go hands free. The Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app with new added features. World Time. See what time it is all around the Flat Earth. A true Earth compass that shows true navigation across and around the Flat Earth plane. Weather. Tap for detailed local weather information. Know what phase and where the moon is at all times. Watch the sun travel between the tropics for the seasons. Select an amazing background. Add your own or have the app change it to a new one automatically every time you use the app. Add a countdown to your next big date. Learn the truth about our world with the featured video of the day. Web button for additional Flat Earth related features from the mythical curve calculator all the way to Tartaria. While talking to friends, easily pull up pictures that expose the globe lie and shine light on the Flat Earth truth. Video playlists in different languages. See the real trade winds circling the flat earth. And clean screen features. Simply click off the items you don't wish to see. The Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app is the best tool to show your friends and strangers how our flat earth actually works.